Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 128th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, if you found any of these useful, feel free to visit my website, voidrealms.com. Click on Donate and make a donation of any size or denomination. Um, also, on the site, you have the full source code for this and all other tutorials. Just select Qt as the language and search for whatever you're looking for. Alright, so, actually, you know what, let me back up. This was about how my day's been. It is like blistering cold and it's snowing like crazy. Americans say, holy crap, before hitting the ditch on the snow-covered road. Canadians say, hold my coffee and watch this. I'm telling you, the roads were like almost impassable. It was ridiculous. So we're going to make a new key widget project. And we're just going to call this my watcher. And we're going to give this a Q dialog, not a Q widget. There we go. I'm going to add the concurrent library. Alrighty. We're going to set up our GUI real quick here. I'm thinking about getting an MBA or a Master's of Business Administration. I actually work in IT but I'm just kind of like looking for some extra oomph on my resume, you know? I mean, I can get a programming job, but there really aren't many of them, and most of them around here are very low pay, and they're not my favorite languages. And we're just going to hit the clicked slot. There we go. So, like, I could go get, like, a Java job or a C-sharp job, but they're entry level because I don't have 10,000 years of experience in that language, which is sad, but it's kind of what the industry is coming to. All right, so we're going to just add our includes in here. We're going to add a queue progress dialog. We're going to include the queue concurrent. And of course, our trusty queue debug, which I wish they would just add that right in so we wouldn't have to declare it. But we're going to add queue thread. And give you a little bit of what this tutorial is about. We're going to add the Q Future Watcher. All right, let's just give this thing a good build. Make sure it actually builds and runs and all that fun stuff. There we go. So the premise of this is we're going to enter a value, hit go, and a progress dialog will come up with a little cancel button that we can cancel at any time, and we'll see the progress of this as it goes. So let's actually make our little static Oop, do task. And we'll say int reference to the number. All right, so now we've got our function that we're going to actually call on a separate thread. And we're just going to add some boring, time-consuming stuff here. So we'll say QDebug. Whoops. My fingers are cold. I can't type. I mean, when I say cold, it is like negative 10 degrees outside. It's just blistering cold. I like winter, but this is getting to be a bit much for me. And winter's just started. Uh, last year, um, we had two weeks in a row where it was negative 14. See, I'm thinking about it. I meant to say negative 10, but it's actually negative 14. So for i, or sorry, for int, <laughs> and we're just going to basically make a really boring, time-consuming thing that does absolutely nothing, just because I want to focus on the actual you know, Q Future Watcher class. And we're going to say Q thread, current thread, and we're going to say MS sleep, and we're going to sleep for 50 milliseconds. And then we're going to Q debug out. I've been playing this video game called Do Dota 2, D O T A 2. It's called Defense of the Ancients. And it's got me kind of addicted. I don't really 
get hooked on games that much. I mean, I play them and then I just don't care, but... Alright, so processing number I of... I'm just... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I've been playing this game and it's really challenging. It's very dynamic. So if you're out in Steam... Sorry, I'm losing my voice. You can look me up and uh, maybe we'll play around a round of Dota together. So we're just going to sleep for 50 milliseconds. We're going to say processing number I of max. And let's actually just... add a little eye candy there. So like I said, we're really just not doing anything important. This is just a time consuming task and we're going to do this on each item in our vector. And if you remember right, we're going to do a Q vector. And of course this is a template class, so we have to give it a template. We're going to call it vector. I always want to say vector for some reason. And yeah, we're going to say I0. And we're we'll say i is less than ui spin box value. And we're just going to fill this array with, or sorry, the array, the vector with just junk values. Vector append i. So before we go any further, let me kind of explain this a little bit, what's going on here. So when we run this, we're going to enter a value, like 99, and we're going to click Go. And when we click Go, it's going to take this Q vector and it's just going to fill it with 99 or whatever we put in here values. Then we're going to actually make a Q Future Watcher and map. Remember what a map does, it maps a vector to a function and calls that function on each item in the container. So that's really what we're doing. But the Q Future Watcher class is going to allow us to control that and actually monitor it. Actually, let me back up here and do a Q progress dialog, and we'll just call this P diag. I'm gonna call it log because P diag is just gonna drive me crazy. P dialog, all right. And we're gonna say set label text. And in a real world kind of thing, you would do like a compute a hash or do some calculate the trajectory of the stars or whatever so Q future watcher and we're not going to return anything from this there's no big grand value that we're going to return we just want to actually control this directly now we're going to say watcher set future and we're going to actually do the cute concurrent map and this function actually returns a, Q, a new Q future so um, notice how the Q future is void which is why our future watcher is also void alright so we're going to map our if I can get that out of there vector and we're going to map it to the dialog classes do task So when we run this bad boy, we're going to actually map that, which remember, this because we're using the queue concurrent is going to run that in a thread, many different threads depending on what's available in the global queue thread pool. Now we want to actually see what's going on here, so we need to connect up some signals and slots. Alright, so we're going to say P loss, what's that? P diag is what I want. And I'm doing it, if you notice, kind of the old fashioned way just because it's what I'm used to. And I also had a complaint about the new way. They were having problems with it. So they had asked that I do this final tutorial with this way. Alright, so watcher, we're going to say cancel. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. make sure that's actually in there yep and then we're gonna hook up the watcher here F 
finished. Oh, I want P dialogue. And I've seen this similar tutorial out there, so I almost feel like I'm plagiarizing, but this is like the de facto way of showing how to use the key feature watcher. Um, I've tried to come up with more better illustrative examples, but this is really about the best there is. Um, some actually like, you know, modify a JPEG, others will like, you know, just do something funky with an array. So watch if I can get that out of there. Jeez. Alright, so watch your and we're gonna say signal. And we want the progress range changed. And we're going to set that to the P dialog. And we're gonna set the set range. I don't know. I mean, I it's kind of a wash. I I'm just so used to doing the old way of signals and slots, but it is very time consuming and it's much more error prone. But I have had some complaints from people. I suspect they're still using Cube Four, um, saying that it wasn't working or that it didn't connect or something. But you know, they got mad and kicked their cat or something. All right, so we're gonna say progress value changed, and we're gonna say. So if you are using Qt4 from this tutorial on, we will be using the new way of connecting signals and slots unless there's some gross problem, at which point we'll address it when we get there. Alright, so we're connecting up our signals and slots, and now we are just going to go p dialog exec which if you remember exec will actually show it module meaning that the underlying window cannot be really be modified watcher and we are going to wait for finished alright now I should actually just connect up these signals and slots first now that I think about it that way because this could potentially fire off before these are connected that's just the nature of multi-threading so we're going to wait for finished. Now, let's actually give this a good build just to make sure I didn't goof anything up. All right. And we're going to say if watcher is canceled, then we're going to do something else. We'll do something else. And let's actually just for giggles here add in a Q message box. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're gonna say Q debug. Um, somebody asked me what are some of my favorite video games. I really just, I like I said, I've been hooked on Defense of the Ancients 2 or Dota 2 as it's called, but um, I just I don't know. I fall in and out of video games pretty fast. Like I bought. Uh, was it Shadows of Mordor? And it was actually a really amazing game, but I got kind of bored with it. I did eventually beat it, but like I said, I got kind of bored with it. And it's not uh, its not a fault of the game itself. I just i have very low attention span. If you haven't watched too many of my videos, you will definitely notice. I'll be like, oh, and this variable, blah, blah, blah. Oh, hey, kitty. You click cancel. Let's see if I can hold my attention long enough to finish this program here. And through the magic of copy and paste. We're just going to say all done. So, whew, that was a lot more typing than I anticipated for some reason. Alright, so when we click the button, we're going to fill the vector with just junker junk data. We're going to make a progress dialog. We're going to set the label. We're going to make a key future watcher. 
and then we're going to connect our signals and slots and then we're going to watch our set future basically we're saying we're going to watch the future the future is being returned from the queue concurrent map you could very easily say queue future equals queue concurrent map let's just copy this whole thing out here to task you could very easily do something like that but it's much more inline if you do this and so we're going to set the future which is the map and the map of course takes a vector our little list here or the container as it's called and maps each item to a function in this case the do task which does absolutely nothing it's just a time consuming task the reason why it's time consuming is because I have a pretty beefy computer and it'll whip through that thing pretty quickly we're going to exec, I mean show the dialog then we're going to wait for finished and then if it's cancelled we're going to say hey it was cancelled otherwise we're going to say finished now if it all works as expected this should actually be pretty spiffy so let's just say 99 hey, alright so you can see it's showing the progress and you can see we're processing and if we just let it go it'll say all done I should probably change that because it looks like an error let's actually do that <laughs> let's not say critical let's say what is it info information alright so let's do 99 again and if we just let this go we've seen what happens it gets all the way through and we click cancel it says you click cancel notice how we stop Um, multi-threaded programming here is you can see how it's processing 77, 80, 74, 76 and it's just jumping all around because it's just going to get these as threads become available in the thread pool and some threads may take longer than others it's just how threads work well that's all for this tutorial I, uh, I hope you found this educational entertaining and this is actually kind of slightly addictive just to watch this thing go but uh, uh, feel free to visit my website um, donate if you'd like otherwise feel free not to um, the source code is freely available